Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to have a look at another collaboration beer. So this one is a three-way collaboration. All three of the breweries involved in this one have featured on the channel before and I've enjoyed the beer that I've had from them. They all come from different countries and the particular beer that we're looking at today is a style that you don't come across all that often, but they can be very interesting when they're done well actually. So very curious to see what happens when these three breweries put their heads together. Hopefully this is another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. A special shout out in this video of course to Davor Shear. It's my Slovenian beer meal. This is one of the beers that he sent me in the last edition of the Davor box and uh, this is one of the kind of quirky ones that he sent me. He's responsible for 90% of the Slovenian reviews that you've seen me do but he always puts in a few kind of bonus beers if you like that he thinks are interesting and this is one of those. So Davor, thank you to you once again for making this review possible. So uh, yeah, for the home side then, we are going to go to a little place called Storberg in Mausbach, very close to Aachen in the west of Germany. And we're going to have a look at another beer from Freigeist Bierkultur. So this particular beer is called Andiamo, or Let's Go, as it would be in Italian. It comes in at 6% ABV. It's a dark uh, porter, if you like, a dark sour, maybe we can call it, with cherries and raspberries brewed in collaboration with Birificio Italiano, who are from the Milan region in the north of Italy, and also Brauhaus Bevok, who are from Bad Radkersberg uh, on the Austrian-Slovenian border. So they are situated in Austria, but the owners of the company are Slovenian. So we could see that this beer is one-third German, uh, one-third Italian, and then I guess one-sixth Austrian and one-sixth uh, Slovenian as well. So uh, yeah, quite an interesting array of nationalities in this one of course. But uh, like I say, this one should make for an interesting review and I'm curious to see how we get on. So let's crack on with this then and see how we go. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Fry Guys, the Beautiful Italiano and from Bevog and we will hopefully be able to add more to all three of those lists in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefetch or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the German another one for all the Italian one for the Austrian and another one for all the Slovenian beers that I've reviewed for you. I will put this beer uh, review in all four of those lists because obviously the beer has connections to all four countries and hopefully we can keep adding to those lists in the near future. Those are ones that get added to whenever we have the opportunity but as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about the breweries and we'll kick off with Freigeist Beer Kultur since they are the home brewery in this instance. So uh, Freigeist Beer Kultur, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Storberg in Malsbach, which is just outside of Aachen in the west of Germany, very close to the Belgian and Dutch border. So the company was, was founded by Sebastian Sauer back in 2009, so they have been around for quite a wee while, and at the time he was working in a brew pub and he was always interested in food production, and naturally this led him to think about brewing beer. But he had a particular interest in the historical beer styles in Germany and making his own interpretations of them. So he started making beer as a hobby, and the first beer he produced was a Lichtenhainer called Abraxas and at the beginning he never thought that he would be able to earn his living from brewing beer but he was asked to attend some Belgian beer festivals and he was also approached by some importers from various different countries as well and things just kind of spiralled from there but so far he's produced well over 300 different beers and he says that he has a bit of a he's a bit of a kind of taste fetishist and he likes to travel across the world researching different ingredients trying different beers and just you know getting to know different places but the name of the brewery, Freigeist Beer Kultur, translates into English as the Free Spirit Brewery and you know it kind of just reflects his personality he says, you know he likes to travel 
and experience different things, the free spirit, if you like. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all we really need to say about Fly Guys Beer Couture. But uh, definitely nice to feature these guys on the channel once again. It's been a wee while since I've had a review from them, but I do hope I can try some more beers from them at some point in the future. But if you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to the date with all the latest goings on, and you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all of the different beers that they've done. Quite a prolific brewery, as we said. But anyway, on to the Italian side of things then. So, Birificio Italiano. So, Birificio Italiano were founded back in 1994 by Agostino Arioli, which makes them the first brewery in the Lombardia region. So, Agostino apparently tried to brew beer with a Dutch friend in his youth, but later he took up homebrewing again along with his friend Mario. But soon after this, his father put him in touch with Gianni Passa, who had trained as a brewer in Germany and apparently his teachings were kind of instrumental in the early days uh, with, Ag with Ago and Mario really basing a lot of their early beers on those teachings. But uh, they worked on their recipes, they built their first brewery which had a small 200 litre kit with four 400 litre fermenters and three open fermenters as well and this site can be found in Lurago Marinone which is to the northwest of Milan and it opened back in April of 1996. So again these guys have been around for a very long time, about 20 five years. But today there are a total of 11 partners in the company which includes Ago's brother Stefano. Uh, Maurizio Foley joined the company in 1999 and he apparently was instrumental in driving the growth of the company from, from then on. But in 2000, they bought a new brew kit of 700 litres, and then in 2002, they recruited brewer Andrea Bravi, who created many of their new recipes. But a few years later, they upgraded their brew house to 20 hectolitres and they're still based in Lurago Maranoni today, although they have a bar as well next to the Milan train station. So I will need to go and check that out at some point too. I would love to go down to Italy, of course, and film a few out and about videos. But these guys, of course, are one of the kind of best known Italian breweries outside of Italy. The Tipo Pills is an absolutely classic beer, so I would recommend that you try that one if you get the chance. But as of August 2021, when we're filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 55 different kinds of beer. So they're not the most prolific of breweries, but they do a lot of very, very nice stuff actually. So definitely worth checking out if you get the chance. And as I say, the Tipo Pills is the kind of a classic Italian pilsner and there's a lot of breweries at the moment trying to kind of replicate that beer if you like. I've seen quite a few kind of uh, copy beers yeah, I guess you could say here in Sweden of that one, but definitely check that out. Beautiful, beautiful beer. So uh, yeah, that's all I really need to tell you about Birificio Italiano for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all those different beers that they've done. So yeah, let's go on to the third and final brewery then, the Austrian and Slovenian side of things. So Brauhaus Bevog, was founded in 2013 by the Slovenian Vasya Goslar. So he had worked in the family electronics business for a number of years and he was at a fair in Belgium and he really just discovered there what beer could actually be, trying all these different Belgian styles. But when he returned to Slovenia, he learned that there were actually possibilities to make beer in Slovenia. So he began home brewing in his garage and he's mainly a self-taught brewer, but he did take a couple of short courses in Germany. But this brewery is located in Bad Radkersburg, a very small village of about 1,300 people in Styria in south in southeastern Austria and the town is actually close to the uh, is, is a little to the southeast of Graz in Austria but also to the northeast of Maribor in Slovenia but the village the village sits on the Mur River which separates the two countries and it's twinned with the town of Gornia Radgona which is Vasya's hometown uh, on the other side but uh, Vasya chose to open up the brewery in Austria because of what he called bureaucratic problems in Slovenia. It was very, very difficult to actually get a brewery established there. And Bad Radkersburg is only three kilometres away, so he would ride it by bike. But uh, the brewery are based in an industrial area of the town, only a short walk from the centre, and the beer can be drank on site. But they have been expanding their capacity since they opened, and they also offer tours of the breweries these days. But uh, today... They employ about 15 people and they can produce in the region of 500,000 litres of beer per year. But as of August 2021, they've produced around 65 different beers and they are probably one of the best known Austrian slash Slovenian craft breweries in Europe. But uh, yeah, I've had some very nice beers from these guys. Davor has sent me some really interesting ones and there are still quite a few interesting beers that I would like to try 
from uh, Bevog at some point in the future. But when I do get down to Slovenia to visit Davor, I'm sure that uh, Bevog are one of the places, uh, will be one of the places that we hit up and we'll do an out and about video there for sure. But uh, yeah, that is all I can tell you about Brauhaus Bevog for the moment or Pivovarna Bevog, I guess we could also t call them as well. But uh, if you want to learn more about these guys, again, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all of the different beers that these guys have done too. So uh, yeah, that is an extended brewery history section for you then. Three breweries involved in this one, although that is not the longest brewery history we've done on Rampant Lion Reviews. But uh, yeah, certainly maybe one of the most diverse ones, I guess we could say. But uh, yeah, I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. There you can see the artwork is pretty nice. Actually, as we said, this beer is called Andiamo, a 6%. Uh, sour porter with cherries and raspberries added into the brew. It has the Freigeist Bierkultur uh, bottle cap on this one. And uh, yeah, I think this could make for a really interesting review. Now, um, I did have a beer that was quite similar to this recently, but the name of it's gone right out of my head. But what this really reminds me of is a beer from one of my local breweries back in Scotland, the Raspy Engine from the Harveston Brewery in Clip Manager, my home county. So yeah, I'm curious to see how this one compares to that, in fact. But uh, yeah, four different nationalities involved in this one, which is quite nice. 330 milliliter bottle, this 6% ABV. Let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste. And then I'm very curious to see what this has in store for us. I think we have got a, a Freigeist Bierkultur bottle cap somewhere in my collection, but we'll keep it just in case we haven't. It's been a long time since I last reviewed a beer from Freigeist, a beer culture actually. I can't remember when that would have been, but I do uh, have one, in fact. But a big shout, of course, in this review to my friend Peter over at the Clueless Drinker. He was one of the first guys to, I think he was the first actually, to review Freigeist beer culture on YouTube. And he was a big fan of all these very early kind of um, American style breweries in Germany, actually. So uh, yeah, some very exciting things going on in the German kind of craft beer scene, if you like. A lot of breweries, a lot of small breweries trying styles that they would never normally brew within their regions and things like that. So yeah, really cool to see these German brewers now trying their hand at some of the American style and English style beers and things. A lot of really interesting stuff uh, in Germany, as I've said. But um, yeah, hmm, this is quite interesting. So before the head disappears on this one, let's just have a little quick look at this. So you can see that this beer has poured with about a one third, somewhere between a one third and a one half uh, finger head. Uh, and I would say the head on this one, it certainly is being affected by the fruit. It's almost got a little bit of a kind of purpley, pinky sort of tint to it, but it's a sort of ivory color at the same time. So if you take a little close look at that, you can see a little bit of a kind of purpley, um, kind of fawny ivory colour there, but you can see the head has just faded away to be a very thin foamy layer, but there's a nice kind of thicker ring around the uh, the edge of the glass there, but I think it does look uh, pretty nice this one. So yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, but I mean overall it does look um, very nice in fact. So yeah, um, if we shine the light through this beer, um, to the naked eye of course it does appear like it's a really black yeah, a really dark sort of black ebony rosewood kind of colour. But if you actually shine the light through this, it's a little bit more like a kind of Coca-Cola, Pepsi kind of colour. Um, so yeah, it's got a lovely sort of dark, very dark sort of chestnutty hue. And I think just looking at the viewfinder on the camera, you can see this a little bit, which is kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, you can see maybe just towards my finger here, you can see this beer does have a little bit of that more very dark chestnutty hint. And you can certainly see it around the edges at the top of the glass here. But uh, yeah, it looks very, very nice, I have to say. So remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This usually determines the magnitude of the colour of your beer, the EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Um, but uh, also any adjuncts that you put in the beer and any bad aging that you do will also affect it as well. And you do have to care about this when you're talking about uh, sour beers. Now, I noticed on this, it did say on uh, Untapped when I had a little look at this beer earlier to see if there was any details about the collaboration. It did have this one listed as a porter, but it's not listed 
uh, as that on the bottle. In fact, it is listed simply as a dark sour beer. So this one uh, could well be slightly more brown sugary orientated than I thought it was going to be. But um, where we're going with this is the fact that this one with the cherries and the raspberries, this is one of these beers where the adjuncts are affecting the colour. And as I've said to you before, it's only really sour beers that you have to care, and potentially IPAs, where you have to care about the adjuncts and the effect that they can have on the colour of the beer, because you can certainly see a little bit of that in this one. But I mean, overall, in terms of appearance, I'm not too surprised at how this one has turned out. I was expecting like a sour porter, uh, but they're describing this one as, you know, a dark sour ale actually. What does it say on the front? Does it say a sour porter? Yeah, it just says no. Yeah, sour porter. It does actually say that on the front. Uh, yeah, so my little spiel there was a little bit needless, but what can you do? So yeah, um, nothing too untoward about the appearance of this beer, uh, just on, uh, on face value, but let's have a look at the aroma now and see how we get on. Nothing more to say about the appearance. So yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. So yeah, you certainly get a lot, a good little bit of a tartness and sharpness from the, the fruity berries in this one, absolutely. But yeah, you do get the kind of roasty, toasty, sour, uh, the roasty, toasty uh, porter components underneath it, I should say. So yeah, this is certainly quite interesting. So, um, where do we start with this one then? This is quite a quirky beer and it does remind me of that, you know, raspy engine. A uh, version of the uh, the old engine oil that we had from Harveston a couple of years back, but um, yeah, do check out the old engine oil incidentally from Harveston Brewery in Scotland, one of the classic um, Scottish craft beers. But anyway, um, so let's break down the aroma of this one for you then. So the backbone of this beer is absolutely a really toasty, well fired. Um, bread crusty quality you can smell that just forming the backbone of this beer and um, you do get a little bit of a slightly brown bready note on top of that but not too much and um, the backbone of this beer is quite um you know quite crisp and sort of straight edged in a sense you do get one or two little woody uh, notes out of it yeah i would say that you do get a little bit of a kind of smooth woody note out of it there's a little bit of a kind of toasty well-fired bread crusty type quality as i say um and also a wee bit of a nice kind of smooth uh, brown bread as well. So yeah, I do like how the aroma goes together in this um, in this beer. It's kind of got exactly what you would um, what you would expect to be honest with you. So you know, the multi backbone uh, it gives you what you would expect of a porter, and that as I say makes a bit makes sense. So remember, the porter is basically a, it's kind of like the 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 English equivalent of the Schwarz beer, if you like, but an ale obviously instead of a lager. So uh, yeah, and lighter body than a stout. But yeah, I think that's everything we really need to say about the malty side of the beer. On the hoppy side of things then, um, I think there are, I'm pretty sure there will have been hops added into this one because you can smell a little bit of a green component to the beer. I'm not sure how old this one is incidentally, but it should still be uh, fine I would think. But you can certainly smell a wee bit of it of earthiness to the hops and there you get a little bit of a kind of slightly herbal smoothness and you do get a wee bit of a brighter kind of floral aromatic character out of this one it does smell as if they've kind of dropped out of uh, dropped out of the beer a little bit remember these green components from the hops will drop out of the beer the older it gets but you certainly can smell the remnants of a kind of floral aromaticity to it but there's also a nice kind of lighter uh, grassy sort of thing going on as well but uh, yeah the aroma on the on the green side of things is pretty nice actually and it sort of bodes well with the, the sour side of the beer because the sour side of the beer I would say in this one does dominate in fact the more that you smell of it so yeah a little bit of grassiness underneath a little bit of a kind of citrusy character too but yeah the green component uh, to this beer is um, it's really nice actually so um, yeah it goes together very very nicely this one so yeah thumbs up uh, to all three breweries on the aroma of this but the fruity side of things and sour side of things just to round off it's kind of what you would expect you get a lot of tartness from the uh, the raspberries I think in this one the raspberries take the lead but the cherries kind of sit underneath and just give you a little bit of depth but you can certainly smell a wee bit of a kind of more oily kind of juicy figgy character sitting underneath that from the hops I do wonder what hop they would have used in this actually but um, yeah certainly maybe Cascade actually um, but you do get, you certainly get a wee bit of an oily kind of plummy note to it underneath and a wee bit of a kind of lighter 
figgy quality. So there's a few interesting things going on in this beer, that's for sure. But um, yeah, I think it is definitely worth uh, taking a bit of time to ponder over the aroma of this one before you get stuck into it, because I could say a sour porter isn't a style that you come across all that often. But yeah, I think we can have a taste of this one then. So let's go for it. This one is the Andiamo. Let's go, as you would say in English. Uh, a collaboration sour porter with raspberries and cherries from Freigas Bierkultur near Aachen in Germany in collaboration with Birificio Italiano near uh, Milan in Italy and uh, Brauhaus Bevog, Bevog Pivovarna uh, on the Austrian Slovenian border, Bad Radkersburg. So uh, yeah, let's get stuck into this one. So Slange, Skull, Prost, uh, Salute and uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Nasdravia, there we go, <laughs> that's it. Let's get stuck into this one. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's got a wee bit of zip to it in the beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. That is quite nice. I'll say that. This is one of these beers, you know, if you're not used to this style, your palate will take a wee bit of time to adjust to this. I'm going to say that straight away. This does have a wee bit of zip to it. But yeah, I do quite like this. And you know, um, Freigast Beer Couture, you can rely on these guys to do a thing. You know, to be quite honest with you, probably out of the three breweries, they would be the one who you would expect this style from more than any of the others. Um, you know, Birificio Italiano, I'm not sure how many sours and things they do. Um, Bevog, I don't know if they, I don't know if they would do either. All of the kind of beers that I've had from Italiano or from Bevog <clears throat> have been more um, kind of regular ales, if that makes sense. So yeah, this is certainly something a wee bit quirky for a good for pretty much. For the, for you know the Italian and the Austrian Slovenian side of things, but yeah, the German side would be the one I would most associate with um, with these sour beers. But this is a solid beer. This one, as I say, these kind of sour porters are not things that you come across every day. But I think this is quite nice, and as I say, it reminds me a little bit of the uh, the raspy engine from Harveston Brewery. So yeah. So yeah, the um, I was just thinking, you know, where do we start with this one? So straight away, you know, straight away across the um, the middle third and the back third of your palate, you've got a nice kind of roasty, toasty uh, quality there. And of course, this is the porter thing. But the, what you'll find with this beer is that the further you go into the aftertaste, that really kind of smoothens out, which is very interesting. So yeah, roasty, toasty, well fired, bread crusty notes across the middle and the back third of your palate. But let's focus. Yeah, well, I would also say that on top of that, you've got a wee bit of a kind of brown bready note in there, and it's not too thick actually. It's just quite smooth. So as I say, this as a porter has a very smooth backbone to it. But that's on the middle third and the back third of your palate. Let's focus on that middle third of your palate then. So in the front half of that middle third of your palate, you do get a few kind of woody. Um, notes coming out of the beer definitely there is a nice wee bit of woodiness in there and it does you know there is something just a little bit sweet about the woody character in this beer too but uh, yeah this really is a, a really quirky and interesting one I have to say so yeah Davor picks out some cracking beers to send me every time. I always enjoy the bonus beers from Davor. But uh, yeah, where do we go with this one from here? Um, so on top of that, um, you know, on top of that kind of brown bready layer in the middle third of your palate, you do get a wee bit of a kind of brown sugary sort of thing in this one. There is a wee bit of a kind of um, almost, you do get a wee tiny hint of a kind of toasty brown sugary note right in the middle right in the middle of your palate there and as you move further out from that um, you know as you move further out from the center of your palate there you can feel it almost gets a little touch like biscuity there is a wee bit of that McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing but like I say the base of this beer 
it's really quite crisp and really quite smooth. It's toasty, well fired bread crust, lovely smooth brown bready notes, and a wee bit of that McFitties digestive um, biscuity um, character. So, yeah, the middle third of your palate on this one is uh, very nice. But let's focus on the back third of your palate, and there's not too much to say about the malt base in this beer, in fact. So, we'll focus on the kind of yeasty elements now. So, yeah. If you go on to the uh, the back third of your palate, then border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you do get a slightly more bready build up in there. You get a wee bit of a toasty, well fired, and a bread crusty note there as well. Then into the back third of your palate, again you get that kind of toasty, well fired bread crust layer, the brown ready base. But then on top of all of that, you can feel a more airy, slightly yeasty brown bready character coming out of this one. So I do like how that. Um, how that goes together in this beer, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think it works. I really do think it works in this one. Um, yeah, so it, when you start at the back, when you start at the back of your palate there, you can feel the flavour is a little bit taller and as you move further forward, it just condenses down a little bit. And then when you go into the middle third of your palate, it is actually very kind of crisp and condensed together actually. But yeah, it's quite a straightforward malt base this one I would say, but the porters are usually quite straight shooting beers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's definitely in keeping with that porter style if you like. It's got a nice porter backbone to it this one. But let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then. So back corners of the palate, you've certainly got a nice little bit of uh, a kind of smooth earthiness in there. As you move further forward, the, the hoppy side of the beer develops a little bit of a herbal quality, and as you push towards the kind of front corners of the palate, there's a little bit of a more kind of floral, aromatic side of things too. So um, yeah, you do get a wee bit of that. I do wonder, is it maybe a German noble hop that's in here? Could it be a little touch of Northern Brewer or something? But maybe Northern Brewer and Cascade. That would be quite, um, that would certainly be quite interesting. So um, yeah. Certainly as the hoppy character on this beer is quite interesting, but round the front curve of the palate you certainly get a little bit of a lighter grassy sort of thing. But do remember, I think this beer has been, is a little bit, it's getting towards the end of its life I think, if that makes sense. But you can still detect some of those kind of, uh, the green hoppy components out of it, which is nice. So yeah. But yeah. The um, the fruity component in this beer kind of takes away a little bit of the hoppy bitterness in this, but this is not a beer that's going to blow the head off you in terms of IBUs, either from the malty side of things or from the hoppy side of things, definitely not. But um, yeah, that's uh, the hoppy side of the beer is nice and, and quite smooth, I would say. I think that's a fair way to kind of uh, sum it up, to be honest with you. So uh, yeah, let's focus on that fruity part of the beer then, lovely nice smoothness to the hoppy character, but yeah, front third of your palate, so border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again you get a little bit of that bready build up in there, a wee bit of a toasty bread crust, and the base of the front third of your palate is a more kind of smooth, uh, kind of brown bready kind of element, but then on top of that you do get a nice little bit of an oily bubble there where the juicy fruity esters just uh, roll their way out of the beer actually, so uh, yeah, the um, more you know, the more kind of uh, oily, fruity side of things, I would say. I do wonder if there is a wee bit of cascade in this, because at the back of the front third of your palate, you get a wee bit of a kind of um, oily, plummy character, but then as you move further forward, it gives you a bit more of a juicy figgy note and almost a little bit of a black currenty note um, uh, at the kind of front tip of the tongue there. But on top of that, of course, you've got the kind of oil, you've got the more soury notes from the adjuncts in this. And what the, fr the adjunct fruits always do is they always kind of suppress a little bit of the hoppy side of the beer as well so as you push kind of around the sides of the palate you can certainly feel some of the remnants of the cherry and the uh, the cherry and the raspberry adjuncts in this beer so um yeah and it'll be puree probably that they put in the beer it's basic chemistry bigger surface area with the puree but um yeah it is nice for sure so yeah the the, the, the sour side of things is quite nice as well. Like I said, when you first take this beer in, 
It's got a really nice kind of impact to it. It's got quite a sharp tar impact to it. And that's a combination of both the cherry and the um, <clears throat> the raspberry. I think the raspberry comes out a little bit kind of, it, the, to me it feels that like the raspberry kind of sits on top of the cherry a little bit. The cherry is the slightly juicier sourness that kind of sits underneath, but the raspberry is the one that's just a little bit more kind of zippy and sits on top. So I do like how all of that, um, I do like how all of that goes together in this um, in this beer. So yeah, the the way that the juicy, fruity side of things um, goes around in this one is um, it's quite nice. And as I've always said, for me, a good sour beer has a good transition between being, uh, you know, with the zip that it comes in. You always get a nice transition between the kind of zippy side of the beer. Uh, and for, for me, a good sour beer has to mellow out really nicely. And this one does. I think this has got a really nice balance between a smooth but still quite crisp malt base. And also, uh, um, you know, also a more sort of, you know, just that sharp tart sour sort of thing. So yeah, it works. Um, it works really nicely. This beer, as I say, these sour porters are kind of interesting creation, but they certainly do work. But yeah, for me, the zippiness on the sour side comes from the raspberry, and the more juicy, oily side comes from the cherry. So yeah, I like how this one. Uh, I like how this goes together. But uh, yeah, thumbs up to all three breweries. Yeah, from me for this one, but I think this beer style would most likely be associated with Flygas Beer Couture uh, rather than uh, Birificio Italiano or uh, or Bevog, of course. But interesting stuff. Let's round off the review then with a quick look at the mouthfeel. So overall, um, you know, I would say that this beer is leaning towards the top, you know, it's kind of, it's a light bodied beer for me, this one, I always find sour beers are a bit more light bodied, unless they're these big creamy things, of course, but these kind of more regular sour beers, if we can call them that, are a bit lighter in their body, but uh, yeah, in terms of IBUs and things, I think there is a wee bit of IBU to this one, maybe you could say there's about 40-ish, 50-ish IBU in this, but that sits underneath, and as we say, the malty backbone of this beer is really nice and smooth, there's a good little bit of a kind of sweeter, um, there is a good little bit of a kind of sweet, a slight sweetness to the malt base as well. But uh, the hoppy character in this one contributes to the IBU, as I say, too. But mix of yeah, mix of malty and hoppy IBU for sure. A little bit of sweetness there in the malt base. Also, nice kind of juicy fruity note from the oily side of the hops. But then you've got the big kind of tartness sitting in there as well. So yeah, I really like how um, how this beer goes about its business in there. Uh, in that regard, this is a really interesting one, and as I say, quite quirky uh, rather than anything else. But uh, yeah, it's a thumbs up from me. So always go to try uh, beers from different combinations of breweries, and this one has worked out quite nicely. So yeah, this is one of the quirkier beers that Davor has sent me as well, so kudos to him for that. But uh, yeah, let's leave it there. So this one is the Andy Ammo, or was the Andy Ammo, a 6% sour porter with uh, cherries and raspberries added into it, brewed at uh, Freigas Beer Couture near Aachen in West Germany and uh, brewed in collaboration with Birificio Italiano who are from very close to Milan and um, as we say Brahos Bevog who are from uh, the Austrian Slovenian border actually very all three very nice breweries but yeah thank you again for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from all the breweries involved in this one. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Check out my social media, check out their social media, and uh, you know, do check out Davor as well. I need to try and remember to put Davor's uh, Instagram in the video description below, but uh, Davor really needs to start his own channel. Great knowledge of Belgian beer, and just a lovely guy all around. So yeah, hopefully we see him on YouTube at some point in the future. But until the next time, Slangit, Scott, cheers, and see you guys on the next one.